Hi everyone, it's Becky here. So welcome to another new video on my YouTube channel. So in today's video, I'm going to show you the shadow shapes of different objects in different times of the day. And then I'm going to do a still life sketch in the bright morning sunshine. And all of these objects have beautiful long shadows. So in the early morning, when the sun is really close to the horizon, it's a very low angle and it's giving all solid objects a very long and stretched shadow. So now it's 7.50 in the morning in late February. And at the same time in the morning, the same orange does not have a long and clear shadow if I put it away from the sunshine. Okay, so now let's try another solid object. Um, a jar of hazelnut spread and you can see the shadow is very crisp, it's clear, it's very long. It's around 8 a.m. in the morning in late February. And at the same time, 8 a.m. when I put this jar away from the sunshine, we can only see a ring of super light shadow around the bottom and that's it. And the shadow of glass can be really complex but beautiful in the morning sunshine. This is around 8 a.m. in the morning in late February. As you can see, the yellow whiskey liquid is being reflected onto the white surface. And if I put a whiskey bottle away from the sunshine, you can only see a tiny, tiny little thin ring around the bottom. And that's it. Okay, so now it is 1 in the afternoon on the same day in late February and here's a look of the glass bottle shadow from the south window. There's still a very long shadow but it's not as interesting as the one in the morning. And here's the look of the orange shadow at 1 p.m. on the same day in late February and I like it better than the one in the morning. Because the shadow is not way too long, the nice shape is very classic. And here's the look of the jar's shadow, it's nice and long, very stretched, but shorter than the one in the morning. I like this one better too. Okay, now the time is 3.45 in the afternoon. And this is the look of the bottle's shadow from the west window. As you can see, the angle is different. Than before, the, the angle of the shadows are always changing throughout the different times in the day. And yeah, I get this golden shine again around the bottom. And the length of the shadow is very long, just like in the morning, because um, the sun is again very low in the horizon, almost a sunset. So in summary, when the sun is very low around the horizon in the early morning and late in the afternoon, we get very, very long shadows for solid objects and for glass and plastic objects too. So after all, if you want to make your still life paintings more interesting, you can paint long shadows. And right now I'm going to do a sketch in my art journal. Right now it's around 9 a.m. in the morning in late February. So as always, I'm going to begin sketching with my waterproof ink pen. So now I am using my Etcher small tip felt tip pen. And starting with the glass whiskey bottle with the lid, the neck, the shoulder, the left side, the right side, the bottom is nice and round. And drawing the labels, also the labels are following the surface curve of the glass bottle, nice and round, the bottom rim and the inside of the liquid, a little bit shine on the side. And now just start writing the letters and just use very simply squiggly lines to show the tiny little letters and just take it easy and be relaxed doing all of these letters and adding some more smaller details around the cap. There's a, a relief of seals. There are three, four, four seals front and back. And there's another label on the other side of the bottle. And now I'm just drawing this orange, nice and round, and the pores on it with simple dots. That's it. And just now drawing the lid, the body, of the jar 
the rim details and the print on it. Again, the label is pretty round following the curve. Just adding these label details. There are two little teddy bears pe peeking through a bagel. And again, keep the letterings pretty simple and squiggly. That's it. And because the shadows are moving, shifting away from the kitchen counter really fast. So I got to paint uh, just to catch those shadows. I have to move these things around so the shadows not move away from the kitchen counter. So I just wetted the bottle area with clear water by squeezing my water brush, starting with the lightest tone leftover blue there on the left side, on the left shoulder and body. Now I'm just adding some lemon yellow mixed with a little bit of yellow ochre for the whiskey part. Pretty watery and translucent. This is pretty important. When painting glass, we have to dilute the paint with lots and lots of water just to save the transparency of it. And that's the first layer for the glass bottle. And now I'm just adding those little label parts with um, pink brown around the neck and the cap. A little bit orange on there because that dash of orange is reflection of the orange on the right. Now this is the fun part. Just putting on some lemon yellow mixed with a little bit orange. And put on the mix of ultramarine blue, purple, and a little bit green above the yellow shine. The long shadow of the glass bottle is really interesting with a yellow whiskey liquid in it. Just adding a bit of shade for the label on the left side because the, the light comes from the right side. And first layer for the orange. So just um, medium yellow mixed with a bit of orange, leaving tiny spots of highlight around there. And now I'm going to paint the hazelnut spread jar with burnt sienna. Okay, time to paint the second layer. Start with the bottle. So it's a mix of um, ultramarine blue and a little bit of um, radiant green to get this dark turquoise color using very thin lines to show the dark shade streaks, especially around the left and right shoulders around the middle part of the neck. Very um, random and abstract patches of gray shades. Again, I like to make my own gray like these. These are not um, dead grays, they're more lively. Because if you look at the glass very carefully, they don't look grayish. Usually there's a kind of a bluish or turquoise tone. And adding a few very watery strokes for the glass part over the whiskey liquid and just paint these letters with red brown the shade for the left side of the neck because the light comes from the right a little bit of a um, darker tone of orange there to show the reflection even better and another layer for the shadow with um, ultramarine blue, a tiny bit of green, and preserve the yellow shine there. And that's it for the whiskey bottle. I'm going to leave it like that. And now I'm going to move on to paint the hazelnut spread jar. With red mixed with a little bit of burnt sienna. And the label part is cerulean blue. Pretty straightforward. A little bit green over here, the little tab over there. And using leftover blue to paint the shadow on the lid very lightly. And the shadows are actually moving so much more faster than we can imagine. So I'm just only about 10 minutes into this painting and 
the shadow have moved a lot and almost you know outside the edge of the counter. So I had to move it, move it all the way to the left. So I can see the whole shadow shapes better. And now I'm getting ready to paint the shadows of the jar and the orange. So just use a mix of ultramarine blue and green and a tiny bit of purple. And another layer, the shadow is also going through the glass. And just another more intense layer and also inside the glass too. And the shadow of the jar extends all the way to the other side of the glass bottle. And also around the neck part of the bottle contains the shadow of the jar. And just adding another layer of um, light gray for the left side of the label to give more contrast to show light comes from the right. And some, you know, another layer for the jar's shadow right there. And another layer of more intense blue and brown to intensify the solid chocolate spread inside the jar. And, and now I see the color of the orange tend to fade away a little bit. The color is too light. So I decided to add a more intense layer of orange I also see a bit of shade on the left side too. I guess I'm just going to add this more intense layer of orange first before I put that crescent shaped shade on the left. So this is a more intense orange and I still leave the little white spots unpainted to show the highlight. And I'm mixing a little bit purple into the orange and I just painted this crescent shaped shade for the left. Now the orange looks much more three-dimensional and use leftover green to paint the stem. A little bit around the bottom of the orange too. And the final polish of more intense colors for the jar. And here's the look of my finished sketch. It took me about 25 minutes to draw and paint. It had to be quick because the shadows are just, you know, shifting way too fast within 20 minutes. There's a lot of change. So thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please click like and leave me a comment below. Subscribe to my channel for weekly updates. So if you would like to learn more about the techniques of sketching quickly and efficiently using ink and watercolors, you can sign up for my Sunday class. So the class takes place every Sunday at 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time and it will last for about an hour and 30 minutes. After the live session, a recording of the class will be sent to you so you can review and follow along at your own time and pace.